Okay. okay. So normally um, there would be a whole setup portion where we choose our guys and then I do the defense setup. Like, in the, Have you played the video game? No. Okay. I know nothing about Six Siege. Oh, okay. This is even more fun then. Okay. So in Rainbow Six Siege, it's set up pretty much like this. You've got uh, two sides uh, attack, which is what you're going to be playing today, the blue team. And then the orange team is the defense. And in the video game, uh, what happens is, is normally you play the bomb game mode, which is what we're going to play time as well. Um, the defense, it's played in a series of rounds where the defense goes in, that you pick your five operators, and the defense sets up the site and then has to defend the bombs um, from the attackers. And the attackers have to get in and defuse one of the two bombs uh, inside the map. Um, so this is pretty much the same, all right? Uh, it's just instead of a 5v5, it's a 1v1, but we're both controlling five characters. So once again, there's the attack, there's the defense. And so normally what would happen is after we'd each pick our teams, I would get like a period of 15 minutes to set up the map how I want uh, for per my defense plan. And then you would get some time to deploy your attackers on the outside of the map. But because this is your first game, I set up the basically the beginner scenario where it just does all that setup for you. So you don't have to worry about any of that. You can just worry about learning the rules of the game. All right. So um, there are three different modes with different goals. We're gonna play the bomb game mode. So in this version, um, there's gonna be up to, up to five rounds, maybe shorter. And the goal of the game for you as the attacker is to get into the map and get adjacent to one of these two bomb miniatures and spend an action to defuse it. And you'd switch it to this diffused bomb. Uh, at that point, if you defuse the bomb and the round ends and the bomb is still diffused, we would go to one final overtime round, okay? Uh, and if at the end of that overtime round, if the bomb is still blue, then you have successfully defused the bomb and you would win. If at the end of the overtime round, I have managed to switch it back and it is orange at the end of the overtime round, then I would win. If you switched it to be blue um, and I uh, switched it back, before the end of the round that you defused it, then we would keep playing till the end of the fifth round. Uh, if you end the round and it's in the fuse state, then you go into the overtime round, okay? So at most it'll either go to five rounds or we'll go to the end of the overtime round, all right? Okay. All right, so um, the way this is gonna work is I will explain the different areas basically of the map because that's important for you to understand how the map works before I can explain the different actions, all right? Okay. Okay, so this is the map. Uh, here's what you got. Um, you have an exterior and an interior of the map. Um, spaces that you can put your characters on have these dots in the center. So any space without a dot cannot be walked on. So as you can see, this little, these darkened areas back here, these are not part of the map, all right? Uh, but all of this around the exterior that's illuminated and have these uh, dots in them, those are spaces that you can walk into. Uh, when you look on the map, obviously you can you notice that there are different looking walls on the map. So these, these walls right here that, I'm, that I've got my line on, these are uh, heavy walls, all right? Heavy walls can have things attached to them like these cameras and um, they cannot be destroyed. You'll notice though that there are different types of walls. Like for instance, these orange walls that have a different texture on them or these walls that have like a red symbol on them um, as well, that look kind of like heavy walls. These. Um, work the same as walls, except uh, at any point they could potentially be destroyed. So for instance, if you destroyed this wall right here, uh, we'd put this little breach marker here to indicate that this wall has been broken through and now you can walk through it. Uh, same with these red walls, all right? Um, and I'll explain the different destructions rating, but basically different characters can destroy things at different levels. So there's a yellow destruction rating. You can see on these barricades here, there's that yellow triangle. That's the lowest level of destruction. The second highest is orange. Uh, characters can only destroy an orange wall if they have the ability to destroy something that is rated orange or lower. And then finally, there's red walls, and those can be destroyed by gadgets or operators that can, can destroy red walls. If you want to destroy something um, and you have a higher level of destruction, so like if if you wanted to destroy this yellow barricade and you had a character that had a red level destroy action, you can still destroy this. Uh, however, if your character only had a yellow level destroy action and you wanted to destroy this red wall, you cannot because it is a it is a reinforced wall. So that's the like the three tiers of like wall strength and destruction. Does that make sense? The yellow and then orange and then the red. Yellow, orange, and red. Yeah. Uh, and if you, I can't remember. You're not colorblind, are you? No. Okay. 
yeah, then you'd have the shapes like the, the triangle, the as square and the, and the hexagon. Okay, so you'll also notice that there are different rooms in each map and there's actually very specific borders to room. You notice that each room will have this little dotted outline around it to indicate the borders of that room. Uh, mm -hmm. This is very important for gadgets that specifically target everything within a room. You'll always know it's part of a room because of that dotted line. So for instance, this room is separate from this room uh, and this room is separate from this room because of the dotted line. Uh, anything with these X markers on them, those just mean that you can potentially put doorway barricades onto those spaces. Uh, if there's no barricade, you ignore those. Those are just, just simply a, a border that you can walk through. You don't have to worry about that. All right, the last thing on the map, actually two more things on the map. Uh, you notice that some rooms have these little arrows in the corner. Um, these, are, these are what we call vertical rooms simply because um, in, in the video game, every map has multiple floors and you can destroy the floors um, beneath you or above you to be able to see things above or below. Obviously in the board game, there's only one floor, but there are these upstairs areas and I'll explain those later. But basically some characters have these things called vertical abilities where they can do something targeting a room from the upstairs. And the only rooms they can target with those vertical abilities are rooms with these arrows in the corner. So basically, um, if you were to play the video game, this is, it's what we would call like a soft floor, right? So there's the hard floors and the soft floors. The soft floors are things you can breach through. And that's basically what's happening here. These are rooms where their ceiling has a soft surface that can be breached through and vertical abilities can be used. Some rooms do not have the arrows like this one over here. So you couldn't use a vertical ability if you had one um, or this room, this room doesn't have arrows. So uh, you can't use vertical abilities in this room. All right, and the final thing to note about the maps is that there are these little spaces dotted around it uh, with these little arrows pointing inward and this, this little double arrow symbol on it. Uh, these are called entryway spaces and these are what connect you to the upper floor area. So right here, this little section in these corners of the map, these are called the upper floor. It's basically an abstracted version of having multiple floors. So whenever you're moving your character, if you're on, a, on an entryway space, you can spend one movement to move from an entryway space to the upstairs. And if you're upstairs, you could spend one movement point to move from the upstairs to any entryway space on the map. All right. Interesting. Uh, the only restriction is that you cannot move between floors more than once in the same turn. So you cannot move like Blitz, for instance, downstairs shoot someone and then move back upstairs, even if you had the movement to do so. Um, yeah. So that's the only restriction. Because there. I mean, that breaks the reality of yes. using that. As a, exactly, as a exactly. Um, and it's, you know, if you want to move, uh, it'll let you, it lets you rotate around the map, but you, you know, you have to take time where you have to stay upstairs and then move around, right? So yeah. that's just how that works. Something that can be done willy yeah. nilly. Exactly, yeah. Now you have the access to these blue spaces. You notice there's a difference between a blue uh, entryway space and a gray entryway space. Basically, so for instance, this is a gray. Anybody, uh, either attacker or defense can use the gray entryway spaces, but only the attacker can use the blue entryway spaces. Um, and basically, the, what these represent is in the video game, you can rappel on the walls outside of the map and get up to the roof and then come from below. And that's basically what these are. Like as the attacker, you could rappel up the wall and then come back down into the map later. That's kind of what those, if you're thinking in terms of the video game, what they represent. Uh, but anybody can use the, the gray entryway spaces. Okay. Uh, and you'll also, the reason there are these arrows on the side is because some things can cover up entryway spaces like this reinforced hatch here. There's an entryway space underneath it, but if uh, if somebody's covering up, just look, if you see these arrows, that means there's an entryway space there, kind of like right over here. These are two entryway spots right there. Okay. Um, and then there are obstacles, but those are pretty simple to explain. Um, does Do you have any questions about like what I just described as far as elements of the map? No. Uh, uh, so these, these walls, mm -hmm. these are yellow or? Uh, no, these are heavy walls. Uh, there's walls, no there's no yellow walls in the game, but there are gadgets or barricades that have the yellow. Oh, okay. Destroy action. All right. Yeah. So in video game terms, we call these uh, hard walls and these are soft walls because these can be breached. That's a good way to think about it. It's hard and okay. soft. All right. All right. So now I can explain the actions. Uh, so what's going to happen is, is the way this works is that, and you have a, a game aid right here to your right, uh, a game round each game round, and there's gonna be up to five game rounds, always work the same way. What happens is, is starting with you, the attacker, you have an activation phase, uh, and you can activate one to three of your operators. Then after you've activated one to three of your operators, it goes to me, the defense. 
and I can activate one to three of my operators. Then you get another round to activate zero to three operators. So you can either activate the rest of your characters that you haven't activated yet, or just pass. And then it gets back to me and I can activate the rest of my operators that I haven't activated yet, or just pass. And if you look at your operators in front of you, you always know if you've activated one, there's these activation banners. You just flip it over to indicate that you've activated that operator for the round. Uh, so you can keep track of who you've activated. Uh, and then in the fifth uh, phase of the game round, then we just do upkeep where we basically remove any conditions from the game board and we remove any conditions on people like being located, being stunned, any smoke overlays, that kind of thing. And then we would move the round marker to the next round and we'd keep going starting with the attacker again. Okay, so when you activate an operator, it, it's very simple. If you look on activator, on operator actions over on the left, there's a whole chart. Uh, you have these seven actions available to you. And on an individual operator's turn, you can do one movement action and then two other different actions. So you cannot do two of the same action in a turn. Um, now you can split these up and you can do these in any order. So you could do your two actions and then a move action. You could do an action, a move action, and another action. You can even do a little bit of your move action, interrupt it to do one of your other actions, and then finish your movement action after the fact. It's up to you, all right? So I'll just go in order of the actions that are listed here and explain how they work. And once I've explained these actions, you've pretty much learned most of the game. All right, so the first action you can do is your movement action. And the movement action is super simple. You have Every character has five movement points. So when you move, you can move five points worth of space. All right, so for instance, if we look at Blitz over here, uh, a simple move would be to just move one, two, three, four, five, right? He can move like that, five spaces, very easy, okay? Um, you can also move diagonally. Uh, you can move to any adjacent space as long as you have line of sight to it. And I'll explain line of sight later, but basically you can move diagonally. So you can move one, two, three, four, right? Okay, there are some things that restrict movement. So for instance, um, if you move onto an entryway spot, you don't automatically move upstairs. You have to spend a movement point to move from here to there. So in this instance, if you move one, two, three, four, five, uh, you do not have enough movement points left in your basic move action to move up here. You'd basically just be parked here. All right. However, you can move one, two, and then three, move upstairs. All right. If you're moving around the game board and you want to cross an obstacle, which are these big things right here, you can do that, but it will cost one extra movement point to get onto the obstacle. So for instance, uh, instead of being one, two, it would be one, two, and then three. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can't land on an obstacle, by the way. So you have to be able to move past it. All right. Okay. Uh, if you are walking through a window space uh, and you, it'll have this little caution triangle symbol on it, that's also another move. So for instance, it's not one to cross this window, it's one, two to cross the window. Uh, and it's the same thing if you're walking through a wall that's been breached. So you'll notice the wall also has that caution symbol. That means if you breach this wall and you want to move through it, it's another, it's another two movement points, so one, two. Does that make sense? Yeah. Pretty basic, pretty basic stuff. Okay, uh, your second action is the run action. So this could give you extra movement. If you decide to move, use one of your two actions to run, uh, you basically get extra movement. And the way you know, this one is individual to each operator. If you look at an operator profile, there's a run value in the lower right. That's how much extra movement you can get if you decide to use the run action. So Blitz, if he wanted to run, would get two extra points of movement. So for instance, in this example, if you wanted to get him upstairs, he can move, his first action could be move action. He can move one, two, three, four, five. And then he could take a run action and move up for six like this, all right? Or he could move all the way down, you know, for seven, if that's what he wanted to do by using the run action. Uh, some operators have no run value, so they can't sprint. Um, and some operators have up to five extra movement points when they run, which is super nice, super useful. All right, but run is basically like you just saying, hey, I'm gonna use one of my two actions to just move a little bit farther, all right? Which can be very useful in some instances. All right, so those are the movement. That's how movement works, all right? Uh, the next action is overwatch. Okay, so if you've noticed the pieces I've been moving around, sometimes they have this little, this little marker in front of them, all right? And you can activate that by pressing one or two over an operator to put them in overwatch. So if, a character has this little bar in front of them. That's called an that's called Overwatch. When you take the Overwatch action, uh, you put it on that operator and you have them face one of the four directions from their square. Uh, and this is very important because 
when an operator is overwatching, so for instance, um, this this t t the decoy tokens here are always overwatching. They've got that bar in front of them. When they're overwatching, that character is basically viewing everything in front of them in a 180 degree arc that they have line of sight to. So this mini is looking at like pretty much this entire room right here. If at any point uh, an enemy operator enters a square or does an action in a square that is um, in line of sight to a character that's overwatching, uh, that character immediately gets to take a shoot action on the enemy character. So basically think about it like when you're playing a, a shooter, you're like camping and holding down a line of sight and waiting for somebody to walk around a corner. Mm -hmm. That's what overwatching is. Uh, so it's very useful. So obviously if you got into this this bit right here with Blitz and you, uh, let's say this, this wall wasn't breached, and you went, mm, like, I, I think somebody's gonna come down this entryway spot. I'm gonna enter into Overwatch and look at this spot. If anybody, any enemy operator walked into the spot while you're Overwatching, you would get to take a shot action at them, even when it's on their turn. And you would take a shoot action every time somebody moves into a square or does an action. So you could potentially shoot someone multiple times after they, while they're in Overwatch. And because it's in a 180 degree arc in front of you, you can watch huge chunks of the map. By, by going into Overwatch. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. That it's pretty cool. Actually, that's a really cool mechanic. It is a really cool mechanic. It's one of the key mechanics of the game. It's dope. Okay, I'll do the shoot action last because it's the most complicated action. All right, so the next action is the tactical gadget action. So if you look in front of your player area, you've got your five operator profiles here, but then you've got this thing over here called the tactical inventory, and you're actually supposed to have a couple more gadgets, so I'll give those to you in a bit. Um, but basically, a uh, tactical gadget action is basically just saying, I want to use one of the gadgets that I brought with me. So for instance, let me just give you some right here. Let's say you took this. All right, so basically for one action, you can use any of these, any of these gadgets, and they all do different things. There's two types. Uh, there's deployable gadgets, and there's throwable gadgets. And they're basically, what that means is self-explanatory. If it's a deployable gadget, you have to put it, put that gadget in the space where your operator is on or in an adjacent space. And if it's throwable, that means you can you can yeet, yeet that throwable up to six spaces away. So for instance, for one of your actions, you could say, okay, I've moved Blitz, you know, like let's just say I've moved him right here. And you're like, I want to use one of my frag grenades and throw it at this token right here. Let's say this was one of my, one of my characters. Uh, if it's six spaces away, what you would do is you would take one of your cubes off the tactical inventory to show that you've spent that gadget, and then you would throw the you could throw the grenade at this guy. And the grenades do different things, uh, which I'll explain later. But basically, a frag grenade deals damage. A flashbang can stun an operator. A smoke grenade can throw up a little smoke overlay. Uh, your deployable gadgets, breaching charges, can destroy part of the map. Uh, claymore, uh, I mean it's a claymore. You put it down and it targets two spaces, and if somebody crosses those spaces, it blows up. Uh, and drones let you move this little drone around the map in. Uh, scan a room and locate operators. So they're all very useful. It depends on what you want to do. But basically, a tactical inventory, a tactical gadget means you just take a charge off your tactical inventory and you use that specific gadget. Um, and I'll explain what the gadgets do later. Um, but that one's pretty self-explanatory. And the next is, or I'll just go and do the last, the last action there. The use a special gadget action effect. That's basically the same as a tactical gadget. It's you just using uh, your operator ability. So all five of your operators have a different ability. Uh, some of them may have the word action uh, listed by them. And that basically means you have to spend one of your two actions to do that action. And also some of them have cubes as well, indicating you can only use those operator actions um, a limited amount of times during the game. So I think, all, yeah, all of your operators have these charge cubes and these actions on them. So you can spend an action and they can each only do it a couple of times throughout the game. As of those do. And these all do different things, all right, which is very useful. So like for instance, Blitz, uh, stuns everyone in the in the room containing the targeted space. He deploys his gadget in, which is super nice. He basically flashbangs everybody in the room for one action, which is pretty cool. All right, uh, and then second to last, there's the destroy action. So I was explaining that earlier about the destructible environments on the board. So the yeah. destroy action is very simple. Uh, where is your Blitz? He's right here. Okay, let's say Blitz moved into this room and the way you destroy something is you don't target a specific item. What you do is if you target a square in your line of sight, so there's no range to destroy action. Um, let's say it's Blitz's turn and he's like, I wanna destroy this barricade. Uh, what you do is you'd be like, I wanna use the destroy action and I wanna target this space. 
So then you look at his destruction rating, which is in the lower right. He has a yellow destruction rating. So what you do is any items with a yellow destruction strength uh, in the space that you target would be destroyed. So in this case, it would just be this barricade, right? That would be destroyed. He'd remove that from the map. Uh, if he targeted this space over here, uh, if you zoom in on this camera, you notice that this is a gadget and it has a yellow destruction icon. So if he targeted this space, he would destroy this camera and it would be removed uh, from the board. Uh, if somebody had an orange destruction rating, they could use the orange destroy on a soft wall and they could just breach it like, like that, just using a destruction action. But the destruction action is very simple. You just like, I pick a space and I destroy everything attached to that space that has the destruction strength that I have, or if I have a higher one. Makes sense? Mm. So like, yeah. as an example, for instance, let's say Blitz had the orange destruction rating and he was right here and he picked this spot. Um, if he's using the orange destruction, which he doesn't have, but just for the sake of the example, he would mm. destroy both this wall and this camera because they're both attached to the space. Okay, all right, that makes more sense. Yeah. Like, let me see if I can find you somewhere that's... Like, uh, if... Well, I mean, this, this is a bulletproof camera, mm -hmm. so I don't know if that... But, like, if I... Oh, wait. Um... Like, if you were inside this room and you did the destroy action on this space, you would get rid of both this barbed wire and this barricade on the window. All right, finally, there's the shoot action. It's the most complicated action in the game, but even then, it's not that complicated. Uh, so let's say I've got Castle here and you've got Blitz over here. All right, uh, and let's say you're not overwatching. And I'm like, okay, you know what? It's Castle's turn. I want to shoot Blitz right here, okay? All right, so the way a shoot action works is you pause the timer once you're about to do shoot action and you do what's called a challenge, which basically means the person who is doing the shoot action says, I'm targeting this person. And then you call the term. So it basically means you're like, okay, this shoot action is a long range shot or whatever, and you have light cover, okay? I'll explain cover in a minute because uh, I just wanna make sure you understand the challenge. So if you as the defender, I would say, do you agree with the terms of this shot basically? And if you look at the map and you say, mm, yeah, I think it's a long range shot with light cover. Yeah, I agree with that. Then we would just do the shoot action. However, if I call something, like I say, mm, you have no cover, but you think you do have cover, you'd go, actually, I challenge that. I think I have light or heavy cover, right? And I'd be like, oh, okay. So if you issue a challenge or if you challenge the terms, what happens is, is we will measure line of sight to see who's right. Uh, and line of sight is super simple. You just measure the center dot of the shooter to the center dot of the defender. And whoop, so like this by using tab. If, you know, after measuring it, we go, oh man, uh, you were right, Robert. Like you actually have heavy cover. You win the challenge. Uh, then you can be like, cool, I won. So you do the shoot action, but you could either give yourself 30 seconds of extra time or take away 30 seconds from my time, All right? If we measured it out and I actually don't have line of sight, like you could say, oh, I challenge you. I don't think you have line of sight to me. Then my action is just gone. Like I used my shoot action, but you actually, I couldn't see you. And so my action is just wasted. And then you could give yourself 30 seconds or take away 30 of my seconds. Basically the attacker yeah. calls a shot you can either agree with it or challenge it. The winner uh, gets that 30 second uh, advantage or disadvantage. Um, and then you either keep keep on with the shoot action or you lose the action. Uh, and for that very reason, you cannot measure line of sight um, while you're doing your turns and stuff. Like that has to, ha you have to think you have line of sight and then call and you only measure line of sight if, it, like, if somebody challenges the terms of your shot. Okay. But once we either agree or move on from the challenge, then we actually do the shoot action. And the shoot action itself is so simple, it actually kind of hurts. So let's just do a basic shot right here. Let's just say, you're right here in front of me. Uh, and I go, okay, I'm doing the shoot action. You are one, two, three, five, oh, four spaces away. Okay, so I count how many spaces you're, you are away. And I look at my operator profile. And you'll notice that every operator at the top of their profile, they have this weapon chart. And they have three range values listed. Uh, we have short range, which is range one to three, medium range, which is range four to six, and long range, which is seven plus spaces away. So because you're four spaces away, I use the dice that are on my four to six range chart. In this case, it would be one yellow die and two red dice because you're four spaces away. So I'd come over here and I would grab one yellow die 
and two red dice. And that's what I would roll. All right. And then you just roll the dice and however many symbols you roll, that's damage that the person who gets shot receives. Okay. So in this instance, six damage. All right. You would just take six damage. You would look at your lower right hand stamina level, which is that little armor vest number. And if you ever take more damage or equal damage to that number, then your character is eliminated from the game. So in this instance, instance I rolled six, uh, Blitz would be eliminated. Uh, Blitz does have a shield, which gives him some cover, but we'll just ignore that for now and say he's just a regular operator with five health. I rolled six, that means Blitz is just automatically yeeted off the board. Okay, no, no defense roll, no nothing. The only thing you get in defense is potentially cover. All right, so in this instance, you had no cover, uh, but if you had cover, there are two levels of cover you can have. You can either have light cover or heavy cover. Uh, light cover is if the line of sight that I'm drawing to you uh, crosses over an obstacle that you are adjacent to. So in this instance, it, you would have light cover because my line of sight is going through this obstacle uh, and hitting you and you're adjacent to that obstacle. So that obstacle is giving you light cover. If you have just one source of light cover, uh, you would subtract two damage from the die roll you receive. So in this instance, with just this obstacle giving you light cover, we would take away two damage. You would only receive four damage instead of the six damage because you have light cover from this desk. Very useful. If you have two sources of light protection, then you would get heavy cover and that would subtract three damage from the die roll. All right. So in this instance, you would have just taken three damage instead of six damage if you had two instances of cover, which technically you do because you have a shield because Blitz is a shield operator. Um, but like a, an instance of an instance of multiple lines of cover would be something like this, where I'm shooting at you through a soft wall. Um, and also, so the line of sight goes through the soft wall and through the obstacle you're adjacent to. That would be two sources of light cover. That'd be heavy protection. Uh, another way that you can have heavy protection is if I'm shooting at you uh, and you're behind a heavy wall, the way that would work is if you were leaning, which I realize now I did forget to explain, but basically um, you notice how some of my characters have this little arrow token next to them. Mm -hmm. uh, that means these characters are leaning around the wall. Okay. Uh, so they're, they're technically their miniature occupies both spaces, but if you can target either of them, then you can shoot someone. So in this instance, if you were leaning behind a heavy wall and I shot at you, my line of sight would target you here, but it would also go through this heavy wall here. And if you're shooting someone through heavy wall, that's automatically three heavy protection. All right. So either you get protection from heavy walls or two sources of light protection. All cool. right. So light cover, two damage is reduced from the roll. Heavy cover, three damage is reduced from the roll. So, I mean, that's, and that's how the shooting works. Basically, you call a shot, you roll the dice equal to the range, and you just deal damage equal to what you roll minus the cover rating. Uh, and the way leaning works, that's technically part of the movement action. I realize we're gonna explain that, but basically when you're moving, you could spend one movement point to lean your operator into a space. So I could move castle one, two, and then three, I could lean him out this way if I wanted to. So now he's occupying Which, both spaces. Both, like it's both of these spaces? Yeah, but he's occupying both these spaces, but he's leaning out from behind the space. Okay. That's how you can have situations like this where, you know, if this is castle, um, if you shoot at him while he's right here and you were like right here, he would get heavy cover because he's, you have to, you'd be looking at both spots and this spot is behind heavy cover. So when there's a, when there's a lean uh, marker, that's where they really are. This is where they're. Um, um, kind of, but also in, in, in the board game terms, technically they actually, the miniature is in both spaces at the same time. Huh. Okay. But this space is where they're going to be drawing their line of sight from. Okay. Uh, so it's one yeah, moving point that's, to that's lean somewhere. Wondering. Yeah, I see. Gotcha. So it's one point to lean somewhere. And then at any point later, it's one point movement point to unlean. And when you unlean, you can either just take the leaning standing away and have your mini in that spot. Or you could say I'm unleading and move it back into this position for one movement point. It's up to you. Miscellaneous sundries to explain, which is basically the gadgets, because uh, you kind of need to know those. And then overwatching from upstairs. So um, there are two conditions that you can receive uh, located or pinged, so call it a video game, and then stunned or flashbanged. Uh, if you are ever located, which can happen by being spotted by cameras or by gadgets, you put this little located marker on your operator. And basically, if you're located, uh, somebody can shoot at you, uh, even if their line of sight, they can shoot at you through soft walls and smoke grenades, basically. So for instance, if Ash was located and she sat behind this wall right here, 
if this was castle, um, he could shoot at you because even though technically this barricade blocks line of sight, if you're located, I know where you are and I can shoot at you through there. Uh, I can't shoot at you through heavy walls, only soft walls and barricades. Okay. All right, so located is is a pretty key part of the game. Uh, and then finally, there's the stunned. This can also happen through gadgets. If you're stunned, no matter what, when you roll attack dice, you can only roll two yellow dice, which are the weakest dice in the game. Uh, yeah, so that's basically, that's the hierarchy of the dice, by the way. Uh, yellow dice are the weakest, orange dice are medium strength, and red dice are really, really good. Uh, yellow dice, I think it's like a 50-50, whether you roll any damage markers, and there's only one, or there's only two faces that have two damage symbols. Orange, there's only one blank, and there is a um, chance to roll three damage. And a red dice, red dice are, have no blank sides. You're at least gonna deal one damage, uh, but there's like three faces with three damage, something like that. So that's kind of the percentages there. So I'll, I'll just explain the gadgets you have. So you have three drones. If you decide to use an action to, to do a drone, it's a deployable. Uh, you can even use this little drone mini if you want. Um, and basically you can deploy it in the space you're in or a space adjacent to you. And then the drone, just like operators have five points of movement and wherever it ends its spot, let's say you drone and it ends up in this room somehow, uh, it does a scan in a, in a whole room. And basically um, you would reveal any uh, defender decoy tokens. And then if you catch any defenders, like any real defenders, you would locate them automatically with a drone, which can be very useful. You can get info on people's locations. Uh, that's the drone. Uh, the breaching charge is a deployable gadget that has a, it's basically a destroy action uh, that has a red destruction rating. So with the, with the breaching charge, if you had a character right here and you used one breaching charge and you deployed it in this space, you could destroy this red wall, which is nice. Or anything that's destroyable. It's just that you can also destroy red walls, which is pretty dope. Uh, claymores are deployable. They're the gadgets that look like this. You can place it down in a space and it would target the space it's in and the space that it's pointing to. And if one of my operators uh, lands and either of the, walks into either of these two spaces, it blows up and you roll two red dice um, that instantly deals damage to me and anybody adjacent to it. So those can be really useful. And then you've got your three throwables, the frag grenades, the flashbangs, and the smoke grenades. If you use a frag grenade, it's got a range of six spaces. Uh, the space that you target it with, so if there's an operator there, you would roll two yellow dice and deal that amount of damage to the operator you target, and you deal one yellow dice to any spaces adjacent to it. So you can potentially catch a bunch of operators. Um, and it also does the yellow destroy action. So you can actually use frag grenades to destroy extra stuff if you want to. The flash flashbang grenade, you throw it, uh, any operators targeted in the space that it targets or spaces adjacent become stunned. So that's how you stun people. And then the smoke grenade is very useful. When you throw a smoke grenade, you can throw down a smoke overlay um, six spaces away that basically blocks line of sight in the four spaces of your choosing. So it allows you to kind of sneak in without being shot at from enemy, enemy operators. Um, there are also gadgets that are set up on the board. So for instance, I already mentioned that I have cameras. Um, it's a little tricky on TTS, I'll be honest, because the cameras are flat, so it can, can be hard to see, but basically, um, a camera will be attached to a heavy wall and it'll only be facing one room. And you can tell that which which room it's facing because it's light side will be facing the room and it's dark side. If you're seeing it's dark side like this right here, it's not facing okay. that area. So this camera is facing into this room. Uh, if you ever walk into a room with a camera, you're automatically located. Okay? Uh, and you can destroy those with the destruction rating. Uh, there's also this barbed wire that I have set up. If you walk into a space with barbed wire, your turn automatically ends. So you have to destroy that before that happens. Um, and then there are these hatchways. These have the red destruction rating. Uh, and these basically cover up entry spaces that I can block you from using until you destroy them. If you've noticed that I have some character tokens that are sitting on entry spaces, uh, that's because I have some characters upstairs. And just like how you can overwatch in a 180 degree arc in front of you while you're on the ground, while you're upstairs, you can only overwatch one entry space. So if you decide to overwatch while upstairs, uh, you would take your Overwatch token from the operator and you'd sit it on one of the entry spots. And it works just like a regular Overwatch. If you walked into the space, I would get a shoot action on you at close range with no cover. Super brutal. Nobody's ever going to willingly walk into one. So it basically just lets you kind of control the map a little bit. Uh, and there's this little interaction where what you can do when you Overwatch, uh, you can try and have a firefight with somebody upstairs. And what you do is, let's say if Blitz moved upstairs, and Blitz wanted to overwatch, you could say, I'm, I'm gonna overwatch and I wanna overwatch this space that Smoke is overwatching. 
So you're like saying, I'm, I wanna take this spot over. I could either just give that to you and be like, okay, fine, yeah, you can overwatch that space. Or I could say, mm, no, I'm gonna contest you on this one. Uh, and if that happens, then we both shoot at each other um, and it counts as a short range shot where each person has heavy cover. And if you kill me, then you take that spot and you can overwatch it. However, if I'm still standing after the contest, then you just have to, then you've just lost your overwatch action after the shoot action. Uh, but it's pretty risky, obviously, for various reasons. Yeah. As you've noticed, I have some tokens and you have miniatures out. That's because in the video game, you know, the attackers, they're walking into a map. They have not, they don't know the locations of the defenders, right? That's part of the thing in the video game is you're trying to look, you're trying to figure out where the defenders are and where their gadgets are and you don't know. Uh, so obviously in the board game, I can't just set out all my miniatures because you'd already know where they all are. So instead, every defender has two tokens called decoy tokens. So basically, you can you know the potential location, you know two potential locations for each operator, and you have to figure out which is the fake one and which is the real one. Uh, so like for instance, I have this pulse token here and one pulse token upstairs. One of those pulses is actually fake and one of those pulses is real. And part of your job as the attacker is to figure out which ones are actually the real locations of my operator. So it's basically a way to simulate that kind of that kind of tension in the video game where you don't know the locations. Obviously, you kind of have a general idea of where I am, but you don't know which specific tokens are the real ones. As soon as you reveal where my real operator is, uh, the decoy token goes away and it never comes back on the board. The way you can reveal is by locating it or just by literally being in line of sight of one of my tokens, it automatically reveals itself. I know that was like a rapid fire explanation of all the rules, but does that make sense? Is there any confusion? It makes relative sense. I just gotta, you know. Uh... Yeah, all of the rules are simple. There is just a lot of them. Um, and just because of the nature of how they're adapting the video game, there's a lot of there's a lot of iconography and terms and abilities to remember. But the actual like core rules, like the seven actions, are all pretty simple. Yeah. To be honest. The line of sight of cameras, is that 180? Okay, yeah. Like so the cameras, the um, they don't have line of sight. They just they target the entire room that they're looking at. Okay, regardless yeah. of position. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So for instance, if you walk an operator right in here. Um, they would they would get tagged by this camera automatically, and then drone movement. Uh, five spaces. And so just like they get spotted. They get spotted by. Uh... Uh, drones don't get spotted. Uh, my operators get spotted by your drones. Right. Yeah. So how do you destroy drones? It you oh, don't. You have to take it. it oh. It's it's one of those things where you, it's a gadget. It's a one off. You deploy it. You move it in. It scans the room, and it just it just goes away. Oh, okay. Yeah. In the video game, they can stick around and I'd have to destroy them, but that's not how they work here. So here's what I suggest. I suggest for the first two rounds, we don't use timers. And then you can have like the 10 minute timer as we go into round three. Normally, we, there'd be a whole setup process, which is included in the game, but this is already set up for us. You would do your deployment. At this point, we would move into round one and we would start your timer. Uh, but instead, I'll just let you start your turn. And so at the start of the round, attackers get to go first, you can activate one to three of your operators in this phase, in any order. Almost an entire team of destroy yeah. based uh, attackers and then one crowd control. Yeah, so you've got uh, three breachers, Sledge, Ash, and Thermite are your, we call them, in the video game, they're, they're called breachers because um, they you know can breach walls and gadgets. Uh, IQ is good at destroying gadgets specifically. Um, and then Blitz stuns. And he's got a shield, which means he always has light protection automatically, which is pretty dope. Barbed wire, and then what's what are these? This Okay, so that is a gadget that I brought with Bandit. That's this operator over here. So um, it's this one barbed wire token, but because it targets all adjacent spaces, I clone these little mini ones so you know what spaces are affected. Um, and it specifically also goes through red walls as well. So if you walk into any of these affected spaces or you deploy a gadget in one of them, you become stunned and you take one damage. Okay. So these can be destroyed if you can destroy the, you know, the main one. But yeah, I put these, I put these here as a, as a way to, so people can see which spaces are being affected by the, the big boy. Okay. I think I, I want to activate sledge okay so you got a movement action and then two different actions in any order 
So I think I want to go. And uh, just so you know, the moment you activate, you, like the moment you do something with an operator who's overwatching, they immediately become an Overwatch as well. Yeah, yeah, until you overwatch again. So I go one, two, three, four, five. And I have two more actions. Mm -hmm. Can I just can I destroy this wall? Yeah. So if you to do the destroy action in this space, it'll get rid of this barricade. So hold on. What are, uh, on the operator actions? What are, what's the difference? Was was the or what's with the checks and X's? Are you talking about on your uh, on which operator are you looking at? No, on the operator actions on the game aid. Operator actions. Doo -doo -doo. Like it says, revealed operators. You can shoot. Hit uh, uh, that's for me. My hidden operators are, are these tokens here. Uh, oh. So when my operators are hidden, like you haven't revealed them, I can only do those top three actions. Uh, I can't. Oh. I can't shoot you, use a gadget, destroy, or do anything, and I have to like purposely reveal an operator to do any of those kinds of actions. Okay. So for you, you can do. You have. You can uh, do okay. I ha I don't have to worry about. Yeah, you don't have that. to worry about that. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So then I'll use. Can I? I can use my my operator, my special gadget mm -hmm. effect thing, right? Yeah. So then I'll do that once. That's yeah, charges. To perform a destroy action in this space mm -hmm. right or like this space right here yeah. so this would go away oh sorry oh you're good Whoop. and then it automatically moves sledge moves into it yep and then i can perform yeah so then you can perform a destroy shoot action in a space adjacent to your new space um there's nothing else to be destroyed in any of those three spaces but yeah oh okay so then for my third action mm -hmm. i'll run because a uh, sledge has run two mm -hmm. so. so just let you know if you run into this room you will be located by this camera and there is a token looking through this doorway in here if it's a real one and you become located while it's overwatching i could immediately shoot you i'll just overwatch okay um. so for instance something you could do uh, you notice IQ has that wave keyword. Uh, wave just means anywhere within four spaces. So for instance, if you activated IQ first, you could use her wave ability to immediately get rid of this camera. And then Sledge can move in here without having to worry about a shot through this door. Oh, I see what I should have done, which was to do that with IQ mm -hmm. and then use have sledge move to this thing drop into here wait until maybe iq or ash moves into here mm -hmm. destroy these reveal shoot and then that's global entry if you would like to roll back your turn because you haven't shot anyone or do anything i'm cool with that while you're learning Are you sure? Yeah, totally. Okay. And yeah, I'll... So he was right. He was right here, ever watching this way. Mm -hmm. Then I, I'll activate uh, IQ first. It's all within four spaces. Yeah, ignoring line of sight. Wave ignores line of sight. So you could just boop. Shoot through this heavy wall, get rid of that camera. And that uses one of my charges. Mm -hmm. All right, I think. Yeah. So you do your your action, your wave ability. It gets rid of this camera. There you Control go. Control the camera. Mm -hmm. So that's one action. Move. One. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So you've got... Um, oh, wait, hold on. So b before I take the fifth one, mm -hmm. right? Um, you can still do actions while upstairs, like Overwatch or any other actions. Um, it's just like... So like if you want to deploy something, you could deploy them in the entryway spaces um, or Overwatch up there. 
So going upstairs isn't necessarily sacrificing actions. That's what you're worried about. Okay. It just depends on what you want to do, obviously. Um, like if you wanted to destroy just, this. Yeah, barricade. I was about to say I'm gonna destroy the barricaded window. Okay, so that'll go away. Whoop. And then. Okay, so then that's it for IQ. Oh, did you want to move her upstairs, or do you want to keep her there? Oh yeah, then I'll move. Yeah, I'll move her upstairs. Okay. So that's two actions and a movement action. So yeah, she's done. So first, yeah, I'll do sledge. Okay. I'll activate a drone. Or sorry, I'll I'll I'm gonna move a little bit first. One, two, three. And activate a drone. Okay. Uh, I don't believe, real quick before you do that, I don't believe a drone can move into a space with barbed wire. But let me check that real mm -hmm. quick. Because I, I think you're trying to get it into that into that bathroom there. Yeah. Okay, let me check that for you. Yeah, you may have to destroy that barbed wire first. This one gets me because you can move a drone through barbed wire in the video game. But it might be different here. Yeah, a drone cannot enter a space containing barbed wire. Uh, and while we're looking uh, at barbed wire, by the way, I'll take the opportunity to introduce this new symbol to you. You see this little symbol underneath the destruction rating, that little like hexagon. Uh, that's where the barbs are facing. No, no, no. The symbol, the triangle is just that the, you, uh, the basic destroy action can destroy it. Uh, but the little hex symbol underneath it, uh, that symbol is the bulletproof symbol. If something is bulletproof, it can only be destroyed if you are adjacent to it. Okay. So you can't do that one like... You can't do the distraction over here targeting it. You'd have to be right up on it to destroy it. So some some gadgets have that bulletproof rating. Like for instance, this is camera is a oh, different type of camera. camera. Yeah, it has that bulletproof symbol on it. it. Means you have to be up next to it to destroy okay. it. I think I had one more movement left. You were right here. So one, two. So you just move two right now. Three. Then I I can destroy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah, I'll destroy it. Okay. And then place, and then use the drone. Yep. Charge. Okay. So you can deploy it on your space or space adjacent. Yeah, I'll do the one. I mean, I'll do the one adjacent. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we have five move it points. So the question is, do you want to end it in this room or this room? I'll end it. Or in this, this room. room. In this room. Okay. So, so you deploy the drone here and move one, two. All right, so it does a scan um, in the entire room. So I would flip over all these tokens. So this smoke is fake. So I'll get rid of that. And it's the smoke upstairs that is the real smoke. All right, smoke. Uh, this smoke. mute, this mute is fake. Uh, so where's the real mute? The real mute is over here in the bomb room. While we're watching this door. Uh, and then this castle uh, is the real castle. So where's Castle? He's over here, over watching this room, and he is located upon being scanned. Let's put this right there. There we go. And where's my other castle? Uh, oh, this one. So this one's the fake one. Goes away. Look at that. So you just revealed three operators in, in one go. Very nice. Uh, by the way, th uh, Sledge still has two points of movement left if you wanted to move him out of the way of this window before you activate somebody else because yeah, he, yeah he, he moved one two three yeah i think yeah because he was there yeah. one two three well, well you can move diagonally so you can move oh right one two three yeah yeah so you can get him upstairs if you want or you could keep him here it's up to you oh wait no actually no i'll put i'll put yeah i'll go ahead and put sledge up upstairs okay okay so then um uh, Ash goes one, two, three, four, five. Oh, technically, where was she? Ash. Yeah, uh, she's supposed. To, was she in this square? Um. No, she was in this one. Sorry, I moved her starting spot. Technically, she's supposed to start there. That's my bad. Okay, so then one, two, three, four, five. I mean, she can then run. 
Okay. One. Two. And so, like, if Pulse was, or uh, if Pulse was on, um, Overwatching mm -hmm. here, then he'd get a shot on me. Well, uh, what this token just means is that if the real pulse is upstairs, he's just watching this space right here, like this oh, stairwell. Okay. I, I can't shoot from this spot over here. My character, if, if the, the token I have upstairs is the real one, then he is just upstairs just watching this this particular space because it's an injury spot. Okay. That's one, two, three, four, five. And all Overwatch. Or, hold on. And yeah, I'll go on ahead and I can only use I can only throw one of these one of the uh, throwables into line of sight, right? Yeah. Okay. And line of sight is just center dot to center dot. I'll use a smoke grenade. Where's the, uh, where's oh, the, where's they're, the uh, they're over here. Oh. Ah, okay. So, uh, the way overlays work, when you throw them, you always have to take the largest one possible. Like, you fill up the most space you can, which would be four spaces. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I don't. Uh, and what you do is you place it, like, in between. So you see that it covers, it's like a little cross. Oh, okay. It covers, yeah. so it's, it's just covering these four spaces. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I think technically, uh, just for the sake of the rules here, I think you have to be right here to throw that there because I think this little thing is blocking line of sight to this. Oh. Then uh, where? But I, I think you I, ha I think you had an extra. I think point I had there. one more. Yeah. Which you because I would because right here I would earn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, right. and then also just as well, uh, just so you know, the smoke will come off of the board at the end of the round. So it'll only last one round, the smoke here. Okay. Um, so just to let you know, if you're still cool with that, it'll come off yeah. after the interrupt. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. So that's that's her whole turn, I believe. So then it goes back. Or, oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then we go to me uh, for my turn because uh, you've activated three operators. Um, so this would be the chance where this would be the time where I would start my time and I could activate one to three of my ops. So in this instance, I like where this bandit is at, since you're kind of approaching from that direction, um, I will uh, activate pulse and I'll have this pulse upstairs do the overwatch action and he'll watch this space instead, since I have this castle watching this area, with the camera in here. Uh, so I don't need to watch both of those spots at once. Uh, and then where's the other pulse mini? This guy. Um, I like him watching this area because I know you were looking at this entry spot. So I'll keep him watching in here. Oh wait, well there's no camera anymore. So the question is, do I want to keep him there? I actually don't. It's actually now more risky. So I'll unlean him for one movement uh, and he'll go. So that was one move. Two, three, uh, four. Five, and then he'll run to lean like this and watch this room right here. So that would be Pulse's turn. Uh, and normally I would have to divide my movement points between the two tokens, but since I only moved this one, I was able to do that move. And the decoy tokens automatically overwatch. All right, so that's his turn. Uh, and then, did I want to move this bandit? Uh, I like where this one's at, but I think I'll activate and move this one. Um, so he'll move, hmm, he'll move one, two, three, four, or where was he right here? One, two, three, and then he'll lean like this, four. And I'll keep this one here. Uh, and then I will activate mute. Uh, and the reason is, is I noticed that this mute, if you breach this next turn, 
and drop down here. He's not watching and he could get uh, yeeted. So he'll actually just reposition like this and overwatch this direction. Oop. So now he's watching both this door and this hatchway uh, and this breach as well and this door. So just kind of cover his back there. So I did that. Uh, and I th and then he re-overwatches for his second action. Um, and you know what? While I'm actually at it, so, so his turn, he moved one, two, and he'll actually use the destroy action. And because he has a an orange destroy rating, he'll go ahead and destroy target this space and destroy this wall, and then he'll overwatch. Uh, and now he's watching even into this area a little bit. Um, so the only area he's weak from is this side right here, but I've got smoke watching this flank. All right, so now I'll pass it back to your second turn for the round. Uh, something interesting, I'll just point out about Thermite. Uh, you know, he's got the red destroy breach thing. Yeah. Um, something, the special thing about Thermite um, is that heavy walls do not block his area of effect and his area of effect is a three by three. So basically what that means is like, if you deploy his breaching charge right here, it targets like the space you deployed in and every adjacent space, which would be all the way around here. And it, it goes through heavy walls basically. So if you deploy this here, it would destroy this barricade and this barbed wire and this wall, uh, just as an example. So he, Thermite's interesting that he can do a lot of destruction from a relatively safe space. Uh, and the breaching charges, that's that's different from the breaching charges that you have, because those only target just one space singular. Yeah, I'll activate thermite. One, two, three, four. No. Three. Three. And then I'll use the charge. Okay. Where do you what space do you want to target? Um so it's a space adjacent to me? Or so either this one, this one, or this one, from where you are right now. Oh, so I then I could move here, mm -hmm. place it there. Yeah. Uh, if you place it here, it'll destroy this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's it. Because uh, technically, this, these are not where the, the this gadget is. This gadget is right here. Um, if you deployed it here, you would destroy this door and this gadget. Um, oh, does that make okay. sense? Sorry, yeah, these are yeah. just a visual matter. Technically, this is just the space of the gadget. Um, yeah, then I'll actually, yeah, I'll place it here, get rid of this door and the gadget. Okay, boom, okay, and that means there's no wall there at all, right? Yep, correct, just this window right here. Cool. So that was mo a move in one action. Mm -hmm. I will remind you that this is a gray spot. Yeah. So I can use this spot, so just be be wary. Yeah. And if I and if I came like right here, uh you would have a shot at me, right? Yeah, I would get a shot at you. Uh no. Let's see, how much have you moved? You were right here? This is yeah. So, so one, four. two, and then three. Mm -hmm. So you could move four and then lean and for then five. I thought it, yeah, lean. I would shoot at you, but you'd have heavy protection. Um, so it's that's a risk, obviously. Um, and then you'd also be vulnerable from this spot from behind. Because mm -hmm. I could, because you know I have smoke upstairs, and he could right. drop down here and just shoot you point blank. Um, and you'd be risking a shot from over here as well. Um. Yeah, I think I'll I think I'll move him there, and then lean. Okay. Or so yeah, sorry. There. Lean. Okay. So then I'll take a shot. It's called taking a doing a repost. So because I'm overwatching, I'm gonna do a repost on you, uh, and I believe it is medium range, and you would get heavy cover since you're leaning behind that wall. Do you agree with the terms of that shot? What'd you say? So uh, medium range. So. Yeah, four spaces away. One, two, three, four, and you have heavy cover. Uh, these terms are amenable. Okay, so it's four spaces away. I look at my gun. Okay, so this is something I didn't explain, but it's very important. If you look on my gun here, uh, you'll notice that this is my range from four to six spaces, but you notice that one of the die has this little like slash through it. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that's what we call those cover die. Uh, and that's because whenever you're doing a shoot action, if the person you're shooting has cover of any kind, you do not roll the dice with the little slash marker through it. 
So in this instance, because you have cover, I'm only rolling two red, not two red and yellow. Okay, so I roll the dice. All right, and because you have heavy cover, uh, you subtract three damage from the roll. So in this instance, you take no damage. Um, but two things about die rolls. One, uh, if you ever get shot at, no matter what, even if you don't take damage, you automatically get located. And then two, I this is another thing I forgot to mention, but we each have this little, this hexagonal token. See these? Uh, this is called a, a reroll token. Basically, we could spend these, you could spend these to get one free reroll um, anytime you want, anytime you do a shoot action. And when you do reroll token, you could spend it. You don't have it for the rest of the game. You could keep one of your die results and reroll the rest. I'm not going to do that, but I just wanted you to know that that is the, an option that we both have. And then for my third action, I'll throw a little frag grenade. Okay. At uh, at your little at the friend. Okay. Um. So, do you want to do the frag grenade, or do you want to just do a shoot action? So if I shot, I would shoot at you with probably the same terms. It depends. Um, if not... we draw if we draw the line and it, and it goes through both of these squares, then technically I would have heavy protection because I'm adjacent to both of them. But if I if the line of sight only goes through one of these, then I actually only get light protection, and you'd oh. be roll, and you'd be rolling two orange oh. and a red. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. And if I threw a frag grenade at you, it would just be what two red? It'd be two yellow, which is a two lot yellow. less reliable. Which, yeah. Then yeah, I. I the, the the only thing you'd get from throwing the frag grenade is that it would also deal damage to adjacent spaces where this mute jammer is, and it would destroy this. Uh, but uh, if I don't die outright from it, then I would get another repost on you, and I think you'd have a higher chance of shooting me with a shot. Oh, action. Yeah, if I shot at you. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if I so it takes me one point of movement to quit leaning. Yes but I believe you've used all your regular movements. So you'd have to be using sprint. Right, I'd have to I'd have to use a sprint. Yeah. And if I stay here, then you'll probably get a shot off at me, right? Um, yes, but you do know that I have already activated mute this round. So right. I won't be able to do it on my next turn. And because the attackers always get to go first, if Thermite is still standing, then you can, you, you'll can you know you'll be able to move him out of the way before mute goes. Okay. Then I'll deploy my claymore and put that right there okay so you can do that i'm just just making sure that you know if because this has happened if to any me. of my guys yeah this has happened uh, to me um yeah. if so you can move around this and and the claymore won't trigger however if i destroy this or if i trigger it everyone adjacent to it will take two red die worth of damage so one time i pointed out because one time i had uh, Glass, which is a sniper, put right here, and he had a claymore watching the same spot, and he was watching all the way down the map. And the person oh. against me dropped one of his defenders to purposely trigger it and to kill Glass. He killed his own operator, but he also, you know, the thing also killed Glass. He basically kamikaze him. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying I'm going to do that, but because I think it's it's a little mean since you're learning, but I'm just telling you what the what the possibilities are. But otherwise, blocking this off with the claymore is a totally sound idea. Okay, then I activate Blitz. Destroy this. Move one. And so I would be revealed by this camera, right? Yeah, if you moved and into this room. Bandit, if he's there, would get a shot off on me. Yeah, um, probably not in this space, because uh, this wall is blocking the line of sight. But yeah, if you move into his view, then yes. Okay. Uh, then yeah, I'll move one. Okay. He gets, I'm real... yeah, he gets located. Oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, two, three. So it's, it's actually one, two, and you move here because you crossed a window. Oh, right. So. One, two. And it's still three because you move diagonally. Three. Move. Okay, and when then, you move into this space, uh, this is revealed. It is actually the fake bandit. It's not the real bandit. I was just trying to throw you off, but you braved it anyway. A real bandit is, is actually watching over here. Could I still move diagonally to this spot? Uh, so technically, no, because I, I think the corner of this just... wall clips it, so it's not technically adjacent. Yeah. 
Then I'll overwatch facing. Uh, that way. Okay. Yeah, smart because you're watching both this area and this area. Okay. okay I think that's my. So go to my turn. So normally, uh, if you hadn't placed that claymore there, I would totally move here and shoot thermite. Um, I still could just move smoke there and kamikaze, but I don't want smoke to die. So I'm not going to move there. Uh, but here's what I will do I'll activate smoke and he'll use one of his abilities. So he has this a toxic smoke grenade. Uh, so he can throw this because he's upstairs. He can throw it down on this entry ray space and it's going to cover these four spots. Whoop. And anyone inside the smoke uh, immediately takes one damage. So I'm just going to give a little a little early damage to Thermite there. Mm -hmm. um, and it blocks line of sight. And if you were to ever move into a space, one of the spaces covered by the gas, or you in an actual one, you would take a damage. So you're not going to take any more damage from it, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of early damage, you know, just because. Um, so I'll do that. And then, and his overarch will technically go away. And then I will... Hmm, he's got a second action. I think he will. I think he'll re-overwatch this space. That's his turn. And then I'll activate castle. Uh, and this is the castle right here. I think he will actually do the destroy action on this barricade and then re-overwatch like that. Um, yeah, so basically if, if you move down here, I think you're, you're gonna gonna get got and that is my turn okay so we have activated everybody so we go into upkeep so any uh, anybody any located markers go away so we would take those off uh, like this one over here all right uh, and then any overlays come off the board so like this smoke grenade comes off and this smoke grenade comes off Whoop. and i believe that's everything and then we flip over our banners back over all right, and then we move to round two. So that, that's your first full round. How do you feel? Does it is it like kind of? It the the pieces are slowly but surely coming together. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that like as I'm explaining why I'm moving my pieces, that it's kind of helping helping you understand a little bit of like the whys, like how. The oh yeah, works. definitely. Okay, definitely good. for sure. If a drone is deployed in a room with an operator, they're automatically located. Uh, it'll only scan wherever you try to decide to end the drone's movement. Right. But yeah, like I mean, if, if you just deployed it here and then ended it there, then yeah, it would locate whoever. And would mute be located then? Mm -hmm. uh, but just so you know, if so, for instance, if Thermite deployed a drone here and located mute, you would that mean you'd be ending an action in view of my overwatching operator. So I would get another repost at you. And as it is right now, if I uh, activated Thermite and moved anywhere, you get a repost. Uh, yes, unless you move back this way. Okay. There used to be a... Oh, they still have it. Oh, dude, look at here. Okay, sorry. If you flip over the game aid, it explains oh. all the gadgets. I was wondering where that aid went. They just put it on the back of this thing. Oh, Because okay. I was going to say, there used to be like just a an aid that you could just reference. So, okay, yeah, here you go. So, question about breaching charges. Mm-hmm. Do they go through hard wall? Uh, No. No, okay. No, only Thermite's uh, Breaching Charge does that. So when you use a Breaching Charge, let's say you target this space, uh, it would just, I mean, it would destroy everything around it, but if, I mean, this is a bad example, but if something was over on this side, it wouldn't destroy that. Okay. And the Breaching Charges does no damage to no. operators? No. I didn't think so. Okay. Activate Ash. Okay. So I'll... Mm, I just noticed something, something smart you could do with her. Yeah, I'm going to use one of the charges Okay. to use destroy, it. yeah, um, this. Uh, I think technically you don't have line of sight to the space because of this wall. It doesn't say... It is line of sight. A line of sight, ignoring maximum one barricade. Mm -hmm. So then I... Oh, well, hold on. I think because oh. it's... Uh, in the target space oh. and a space just I think you could target this space and it would destroy oh. well actually any the, orthogonally perform the, perform the targeted perform a destroy action in the targeted space and a space orthogonally just do it so if you targeted this you could just do the destroy action here so you can still destroy this wall if that's the one you wanted to do yeah 
But I don't think I do. I think I want to destroy uh, this wall. Okay. And it's any space orthogonally to it. Yeah, so I don't think there's anything. Eh. No, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. If I could do damage to, to the little castle there. but. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to point out something you could do? I'm not saying well, I was you could gonna, do. Yeah, I was going to Overwatch facing mm -hmm. this way. Yeah, that could be good. Or... Um, do you or me, do you want to point out, oh wait let me see do you have it um oh you do so something you could do um if you didn't destroy this is you could throw a smoke grenade right in here and it would block off these and spots block, yeah. and if you moved in you could shoot castle and then, from behind. Shoot and then let's see it would be one two three four and then five you could hit, hide back in the smoke afterward that does seem like a better use of resources the um the smoke grenade uh, yeah, the smoke grenade. So not destroying that. Using. Uh, I will happily sabotage my own game to help you. That, yeah, learn those, moves. That's, that's pretty freaking cool. Mm -hmm. All right, so using, All right. using your last smoke grenade, so I'll take the cube off. One, two. Yeah. So while normally I would get a reaction on you because you were in the smoke grenade, this guy cannot see you. So it's one, two right here. Because you're crossing the window. And you can move diagonally over here. So it could just be one, two, oh, three. Three. Mm -hmm. Four. Five. So can I point something out to you? Yeah. Um, if you move five here and you do a shoot, that's great, but then this guy can just come back around and shoot you point blank. If you just stand here and then use your last movement five to move back into the smoke, oh. um, you wouldn't be able to get okay. shot at. Does right. That, does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, it does. Because oh, I think, oh. yeah, because you, you use one action to throw the smoke grenade, you would use the second action to shoot. So you wouldn't be able to overwatch. So if you just hit right here, there's nothing stopping Blitz from just walking in and shooting you afterward. Cause this would be your okay. last movement. Yeah. So then I I would take a, I think yeah like a regular shoot action here mm -hmm. on castle. You know it's two it's two spaces. There's no cover. Uh, so I won't challenge it, but I will say uh, with the because linear steady, yeah, right. it will be light cover technically because because part of me is behind this thing right here. Yeah. So like that could be an instance where you challenge and I say mm, I'm challenging that I have light cover and then we could measure it out and. Oh look, your line is going through the square with the obstacle, so I do have light cover. Yeah. But then, I, then you know, light cover, mm -hmm. light cover. Yeah, we, we we play it. You'll still, I mean, you're still rolling a yellow and two red, which is really good. There you go. Okay, so uh, with this roll, um, it's four damage minus two because of light cover, so I would only take two damage. If you wanted to, you could use your reroll token. Uh, and you could save one of the die and then reroll the rest if you're trying to get a kill. Or you could just move back into the smoke now and just save your reroll for later. It's up to you. Does he keep the two damage? So if you chose to reroll, um, you would just pick one die and you'd set it aside and you'd reroll the rest. And then whatever your oh. new roll is, is the final okay. roll. So then, yeah. yeah. Then I, so, I mean, I, I would. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would I suggest. In my, in my naivete of the game. Yeah. I would suggest saving the yellow die because if you reroll this oh, one, there's because the, I, that already that already yeah. has damage and that has the you you know you're you're probably gonna get more damage when you reroll the reds this yeah. one you might roll a blank again oops yep. so so this so this goes away yeah Whoop. um we're pulling levers yeah exactly but anyway yeah that's so i was just keeping this one because you already have the damage on there which is really nice and these have these symbols which is dope so minus two so you did four damage which is a lot better uh, Castle's yeah. health is five. It's five. Yeah. So, but he's got one, one damage left. He's located. So I'll put four damage on the little castle. Okay. And then you still got your one point of movement left. Then yeah, I move back into the smoke. All right. I think I'm gonna activate sledge. Okay. Bro's gonna drop down here. Okay. That's one, mm -hmm. two, 
three, three, four. Because you're crossing a window. Three, four. Right. And then I just want to make sure I'm reading it right. About his ability. Yeah. You can you can definitely uh. You can definitely cap off castle if that's what you're looking to do with it. Yeah. I think. The use a charge. Oh, if you're gonna do it, um, I would use use your last move to move here. Right. Yeah. And then I just I'd destroy that wall mm -hmm. and place it. Yeah. So with his gadget, uh, you'd be technically you would target this, and then it would perform the destroy action here, and then it would let you move your mini right here. Okay. And then, and then I get to shoot. Does that make Does that make sense? The way it the way it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. De yeah. It's deployable, ignoring one light wall. So you would target this space. It would destroy it, and then you move into the space you target. And then I'd move into the space that I target, yeah. And then you could do another destroy or shoot action adjacent to you, which would be right there. Yeah. Which I'd go on ahead and take a shoot action, mm -hmm. which then is two red and uh, orange. And I'd... Yep. Yeah, no cover. Short range. Yeah, one. It's literally impossible for you to not kill him here. Okay. So, yep, castle is gone. Good kill, sir. And then so he has one action left. Did he get? Well, because he moved. Yeah, he just he, moved, and he did his charge. Yeah, he did his. Yeah, that whole hammer action is all one action. The destroy, and then the move, and the shoot. That's all one. Oh right. Yeah. Mm hmm So he's got one more action left. Yeah, that that's you could do a you could do a lot with that one sledge action. He's one of our favorite characters in the game. So just something to consider. Um this is an entry spot I can move to. Uh oh, and then I could I should I should overwatch. Yeah, this character could potentially move around uh this way. Actually, I don't know if this guy can shoot you because Ash is blocking this spot. You'd have to destroy this wall to be able to shoot you. Uh, but you could potentially get shot from here or from here. Uh, this token could come over here if that's the real one. Um, so you can't overwatch. It's just you'd have to pick a good direction to overwatch. Um, or you could sprint and follow Ash into the smoke. Because does Sludge? Yeah, Sludge has two sprint. He has two run, I mean. But yeah, those are the three. Those are the three angles that you could potentially get hit from where you're at right now. Okay, I think I'll Overwatch. Um, facing this way. Okay, that means you're still a danger from somebody popping down here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, and, and, and got, I, I do oh, have. Oh, you got smoke up there. Yeah, yeah, you you know I have one operator up there. Yeah, yeah. Actually, no. Yeah, I'll go that way, and then I can figure out another way because it's more like it's it does me better to make sure that you don't have two guys mm -hmm. up upstairs instead of covering the one who's here mm -hmm. and the possibility that that pulse is there yeah and of course you also have another activation so if you can do any that's another thing to consider is that you could for instance iq you could overwatch this way with sledge and iq could overwatch this spot that's something you can also do. Or you can, you know what I mean? Or you can move IQ down here and have her overwatch this this way, you know? Uh, like she could come down yeah. here and she could destroy this and then cut this off, you know? So with your, when you think about it um, on your activation, instead of thinking about it as three separate operators with their two actions, you really have six actions when you consider all three operators together. And like, what can, how can you coordinate those? So, that would be my suggestion is finding a way to cover because sledge is still um, vulnerable from the side is finding a way to cover this flank as well. Yeah, I'll activate IQ. Okay. Um, I hope you don't feel like I'm moving for you. No, not okay. at all. I okay. just, I have this perfectionism thing mm -hmm. where I feel like I should have already seen what you've told me yeah. is good. Well, um, it just comes from playing, <laughs> playing a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. So, IQ would come here. She would be she located will. because of the camera. Yeah. So that's one. Right. Two, 
three, four, five. Oh yeah, then Overwatch facing. Um, that's tricky. That's tricky. Uh, so here's what I'm noticing. I'm noticing that you pretty much have control of this side of the map. And the reason that's bad is because the defense, here's a little tip for you. The defense operators, none of them have uh, any red destroy in their kit. Um, there's only like one operator, but she's one of the expansion operators. She's not in this beginner setup. So what that means is I can't move into this. I can't destroy this hatch and move down here to watch from here. Uh, I can't move down here and destroy this wall. Uh, I can't move over here and destroy this wall. So basically you have cut me off from the side, which means this is, you have a pretty good shot at getting to this. So I need to figure out a way to somehow, and you're still also putting pressure on this side too, which is a really good, really good move. So I have to try and figure out how to get operators over here uh, to help defend. So, uh, so what I'm currently thinking is, oh, by the way, sorry, uh, when you moved here, because you have line of sight to this uh, token, Holds. it flips over. Uh, that is a repulse. In fact, actually, because he was overwatching, he would technically get a repost at you. He would get a shot off on me. Yeah. Does that? Okay. I'm sorry. Now looking at that, does that change how you want to do it? Like, do you want to? I would at least no, lean. No, that's that's a hundred percent. Yeah. Worth it to me. Well, um, that's a mistake you could make with the timer. I would suggest that you use your fifth point of movement and you lean that way. So that way. To you, lean. Yeah, because if he shoots at you, it's going to be heavy cover because of this wall block. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does make sense. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so here, so you would use one, yeah. two, three, four, and then you'd lean over there. So you get the, you watch the same spot, but if this okay. was the real token, which it is, then you would get, you get heavy cover. Okay, so when you move there. Because I, I, cause I uh, what I really, really wanted to find out was if that was pulse or not. Yes, okay, yeah, sorry, like, I, I, then, I forgot that the token was there. Then this, then this Overwatch thing for pulse would go away, right? Yep, yeah, okay, so that goes away. Yeah, sorry, my bad, I was looking, I forgot that that token was there. So when you move there, firstly, he gets a repost. Uh, long range, heavy cover. So I roll a yellow and two orange. Not, yeah, not great out. So two damage to IQ. So that's one, two. Uh, and then when you overwatch, that is another uh, repost. Oh, oh, hold on, I'll reroll this. Oh, sorry, that was a, that orange was a one damage, wasn't it? Oof, okay, so Unfortunately, uh, even with three damage taken away, you take three more damage, which means IQ would, would go down, unfortunately. Okay. So that's a dead IQ. So it turns out that was a good instance of me overwatching. If I hadn't forgotten my token there, I would look less like an idiot, but does that make sense though? So you, yeah, you move no, into a space, so he gets sense. a repost, and then you overwatch, and so you finish an action in his line of sight, so he gets another repost. Okay. Okay, yeah, so no, that, makes, that makes sense. All right, so with Pulse here, his die, and to be honest, that was actually a shock to me because with heavy cover, I'm rolling a yellow and two orange. The chances were more slim that it'd kill you um, with heavy cover. Because you don't normally- it's, it's, I mean, it, it's good. Uh... Yeah, so I like, I like where Pulse is watching. And actually, in this instance, this would be a good chance for me to capitalize on Sledge being watching this way. Yeah. Uh, so I would unlean for one, two, three, four, five, and then, or let's see, only for one, two, three, four, five, or two, three, four, yeah, five over here. Okay, so when I go right here, um, I will have a shot at Sledge. So that's medium cover, or medium range, no cover. What'd you say? Uh, I'm shooting at Sledge. It's medium range, no cover. Uh, yeah, I can't contest that. Okay. Oh, uh, oh yeah, never mind. Sorry, sorry. Never mind. Like theoretically, right, I could, but it doesn't. Yeah. Like but... outside of the game, it doesn't make sense because you can clearly see that if a line were drawn. Yeah. Wow. Unfortunately, I only rolled four. So Sledge is not down. It's pretty good. Um. And you are located. So I'm not going to use my real token because with four damage, I'm thinking, cool, Sledge is pretty weak. I can kill him easily later. I'd rather save my reroll token for when 
I want to try and get an auto kill on one of your guys with more health left. Yeah. So that's why I'm saving it. So instead, I'll put him in Overwatch like that. It's pulse. Um, another thing I could do is Bandit's pretty exposed. Mm -hmm. So the problem I'm thinking about here is that he has an impact grenade. I could destroy this wall and move him out. Uh, the problem is wherever I leave him, he will be exposed to Ash at the beginning of the next round. I can't really like get him out in any meaningful way, um, which is really annoying. I mean, I could move. So let's think about this. He's got five run. He'll move one. He'll use an impact grenade to perform an orange destroy action right here. He'll move two, three, four, five. And he'll run for six, seven, eight. And then he'll nine lean. And then he'll use his second action to overwatch that area as well. Um, that's Bandit. And I've got this mute here. I'll activate him and it's interesting, I could just do a shoot action on Thermite if I wanted to, because he's not overwatching. Uh, so in fact, actually, so he's got four damage left, and if I can get up in close range, I'm rolling an orange and two red, which is really good odds. So he will un overwatch and he'll move one, two, three. Or wait, no, he can still beat my cover. No, no, he can't. One, two, three, four, and then he'll lean for five like this. And then he's just gonna do a shoot action, point blank, heavy cover. Okay. So he's got an orange and two red, and it's, it'll be minus three to this roll, but I'm feeling pretty good that I can roll enough to deal four, because I'm rolling really good dice. Uh, Wow. Okay, so this would be a good instance for me to use my reroll token, because I definitely want to, I wanna kill uh, Thermite Therm here. Yeah. So use my reroll. I'm gonna save the two damage on the weaker die and reroll the two reds. Okay, so unfortunately still not a kill, but three damage. Uh, and he will, where did he move? One, two, three, wait. One, two, three, four, and five. Mm. Okay, well, my cockiness has kind of put Mute in a bad position. Because uh, if I overwatch here, Thermite... Oh, wait, no, no, this is good. Because you'll have to unlean. If he unleaned like this, I'd get a shot before you can move behind his sight. Um, or he'll have to back up this way. So I'll actually, yeah, I'll put him in overwatch. It's fine with me. Um, that's three of my operators. So it is back to your turn. Activate Blitz. One, two, three... Mm -hmm. Use a breaching charge. Okay, blowing up this uh, red wall. Yeah. Okay. And I'll overwatch. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll overwatch there. Okay. And then, all right. So then I activate thermite. Mm -hmm. I'd obviously take a shoot action. It's close quarters or it's yeah it's it's close heavy mm -hmm. heavy cover you've got what we call the rainbow one of each color the the, the rainbow six rainbow six nice good roll so three damage to mute so mute is uh, technically both mute and thermite should be located because i shot it thermite earlier Okay, uh, and then because you shot it, when you shoot at me, I get to repost against you since I'm an Overwatch. Right. So I will do the same shot against you. Well, orange and two red. And I only need to roll that much. So two damage to you. So that means Thermite uh, is dead. This is gear go away too, that claim. It was tricky. You really wanted to try and get a one shot on that one. But, you know, I looking at your, your die, I knew, I mean, if you rolled high on everything, you would have killed him, but I knew with with heavy cover, I had a pretty good pretty good shot of surviving that roll. Well, I mean, I think it was my best bet because no matter what, you were going to get a repost on me. Yeah, I mean, the only thing you could have done is moved away. Like if you moved right here, 
I would not be able to, but, and then it would kind of force you to move out of the position you had and, you know, come over here. Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't go upstairs because I, 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 I would definitely repost on that spot, but yeah. Yeah. It was a tricky I, spot you were in. I think the best move I could do was mm -hmm. uh, overwatching. I mean, a very narrow line of sight, but at least. Yeah. But it's something because it keeps me in something. this line. And I think it keeps smoke from dropping down there. Yeah, it does. Or because I, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway. So, yeah. So, so let's talk about this then. So I have smoke left. So I'll just tell you some of the options that I have that I could see here. So something I could do is I could throw one of his smoke things here, so that it would block off your line of sight, and then I could uh, throw a nitro cell on you because uh, it's a throwable. I can throw it through the smoke overlay, and it would deal two two. Uh, orange dice of damage to you okay. um but if i don't kill you outright then my smoke would be kind of stuck here and he wouldn't be able to overwatch so um it's a gamble there i could kill you with two orange i could very well not kill you with two orange that but that is an option i could drop here uh and just shoot okay. at blitz with no cover i mean he has his shield so uh yeah I think that's probably what I what I'll do. Um, so I'll move. So one, two, one, two, three, four. Hmm. So he'll stop here, uh, and he's going to shoot at you at medium range, and you would get light cover because you have a shield. So he rolls a yellow and two red, and negating it'll be two. negating two. Yeah. So you would take three damage. Uh, and then in this case, I think it is advantageous for me. I know it's getting a, a little mean on you, but I will- but to, to shoot again, right? Well, I can't, because you, you can't shoot again, remember? You can only do two separate oh, actions. Yeah, yeah. I will use one of my last gadget, which is this nitro cell. It's basically like a frag, frag grenade, but for the defenders. So I'm gonna throw a C4 at you, uh, targeting your space, and that deals two orange die worth of damage to you. And the shield does not block damage for this. So I'm just trying to roll two damage to finish off. Wow, look at this. Do you see this? Only one damage. <laughs> Blitz remains. And uh, smoke is kind of, because he didn't kill you, he's kind of. Doesn't smoke. Yeah, and, this, this, yeah, and that'll go away. So he's kind of, ooh, he's kind of a little in a rough position. So he moved one, two, he moved three, four, five behind this cover. It's not going to give him much, but it'll be something. I'm actually shocked that I didn't, that I didn't kill you. Been low, been low rolls this game. Okay, that is all my ops. Right, so now we would go into round three. So we flip things over. So here's the question. With two rounds, are you feeling like you want the training wheels come off all, maybe do some timer and just see what happens, or do you want to keep going no timer? So these are, it's, we're getting into the last two rounds. Yeah. And if I disarm one of the things, we have one overtime round, right? Yes. Let's let's have the training wheels come off and come see off. how bad you thrash me. Okay, so so the way the timer works is in the basic timer, which is what I'm gonna have. I get one minute per operator, so I would start with four minutes. Uh, you have the beginner timer, which is two minutes per op, so you will start with six minutes. Here we go. All right. So first, I'm gonna take um, blitz. Mm -hmm. I'll activate blitz. It goes one two. Three. Mm, decisions, decisions. You know, okay. One, two, three, four, five. All okay, right, then yeah, I'm gonna sprint. Do one. So, yep. Take a shot at you, at mute. Okay, so I'll pause the time. One, two, three, so close quarters, no cover. Yeah, I agree with that. You can definitely see him. Okay. So what have you got? Two yellow, two orange. It's pretty good. You just need to deal. Yeah. All right. Mute is dead because he already had three damage. Then. Yeah, I think that's where it ends for Blitz. Mm -hmm. All right. Resuming your timer. Thanks. 
then it's probably best right it's best for me to use sledge to shoot at i think so pulse and hope you get a one shot yeah so pause your timer while you can do the do the shoot action yeah okay um so that's i mean yeah that's medium with no cover no cover yeah, yeah pretty much not gonna challenge that so i think it's the same role as your blitz so you just need to deal four damage which is pretty likely. All right, yeah. Pulse is a lightweight, so he's only got four health. So that is a dead pulse. Very nice. Um, okay, so then uh, sledge one, two. Or actually, yeah, I'll s I go in the doorway. Got a minute and a half. And I'll overwatch this way. Okay, and you got Ash. So then I've got Ash. We'll go one, two, three, four. Five. She does have sprint. Sprint up into the vent. Yeah, I'll I'll just I'll deploy a drone. Okay. Uh uh in here. Okay. So locate smoke. Yeah, I'll locate smoke. Okay. All right, that's all your actions. Look at that, you had 18 seconds to spare. Oh. Okay, so I still get four Keep minutes, that. even though, so I get, it depends on how many operators I have alive at the beginning of the round, is how much time I have. Um, so even though you killed some ops, um, I still get the, the one minute per the four operators I had alive at the beginning of the round. Um, does, that, does that make sense, like the way the timer would normally disperse? Yeah. Okay. So I start my timer. I've only got two ops, which is great. Uh, you've got a good overwatch here with Sledge, which is tricky. It kind of makes me- I should have overwatched. Freak, dude. Kind of makes me nervous. Uh, yeah, because you left this open, I will activate Smoke first, and I am going to move him one, two, three, four. He's gonna move up here, and he will just overwatch. Ooh, ooh. Ah. Uh, uh, do I- See, okay, so this is why this is tricky. So like, I could do this to open myself up to shoot bullets, um, or I could do this and force Sledge to like retreat back and be the next turn, because you wouldn't be able to go either of these directions if I keep Bandit here. Um, yeah, let's do this one, okay? Uh, and then I'll activate Bandit. He will, oh, do, I want him to, do I want him to keep this? So here's something you could do. You could drop Ash here and you could destroy this and shoot Bandit. But also I like that he's holding this angle with Sledge and I don't know how to get around that. Um, so you've kind of put him in a tricky position here, to be honest. So he'll only for one, or only for one, two, three, four, five, and he'll go six and lean. Oh, 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 oh. One, two, three, four, five. And he'll shoot at one, two, three, four, five, six. He's got sprint five. He'll sprint for six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, he's gonna blast Blitz right in the face. Uh, so Dang. short range, uh, light cover because of your shield. So he gets one orange and two red. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. You have to do one damage, right? Yeah, yeah so three damage. That's what's going. Uh, and that is, that's it, that's my turn. So we now go into round four. So I flip my dudes up, I get reset, I get two minutes. And you get four minutes. Okay, and I'll start your time now. All right, so here's the, the two options you have as I see it. You've got a breaching charge left, which means you can blow this hatch or this hatch. Um, uh, if you blow this hatch, you could probably come to this bomb with Ash pretty easily. Um, but you know I have smoke upstairs. Here, I'll pause the time so you can take this. You know I have smoke upstairs. So whichever you blow, I can follow you. Uh, so, so can I can I use Ash in the vents or in the in the ceiling mm -hmm. to use a breaching charge on that? Yeah, because it's a deployable gadget, uh, and this is on an entry space. You can target this with a breaching charge since it has a red huh. destroy rating. Uh, so. My suggestion just from looking at it is that you already have Sledge on this side. 
if you blow this one right here, um, you can come over here with Ash and you can come down here with Ash and you could watch this area and then come over here with Sledge and defuse this bomb. And then you just have to hold this angle and this angle. Um, this is also an option for you if you blew this, but the thing is if you blew this and you came over here, you'd have to deal with Bandit that's right here and you'd also have to deal with Smoke who could come down right here um, or Smoke could come down over here. Um, so this one would be a little bit harder to defend. Whereas this one, you kind of already have this side down. So that would be my suggestion. Um, if you're looking at purely objectives. Uh, obviously you could probably, you could also use Ash to just run down or run down here or here and she could literally just shoot Bandit with her sprint. Like that's also an option. Um, the reason I suggested this one is because even though you could get a kill here, Honestly, either one is fine. Like killing Bandit is, is and getting me down to one operator is not a bad move because then you could target either either of these two. Um, I don't know. At, at this point, it's kind of up to you on how you want to proceed. This one is, I think, a more conservative play because you already have your two op. You could get your two ops over here, and you could hunker down behind these two heavy walls. Yeah, I mean that's a out. sick conservative play. It's a great conservative play. Well, we but, didn't. But we didn't this... come here to be. <laughs> conservative you came here to shoot people i came here to to you know mm -hmm. shoot bubble gum yeah and kill operators and you're all out of bubble gum and i'm all out of operators on my side <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey so am i so am i so yeah um so i think all right do we want to start my time yeah oh, it's already yeah let's go hey <clears throat> so i think i'll activate sledge first okay rock and roll one or wait one two three this wall's open by the way yeah four five or technically it'd be one two three four it's not four yeah. sledge has a run of two yeah so he could use his run to just get over yeah one two Yep. That way. Smart play. Because I've got this spot right here. All right. Then activate Ash. Air down. One, two, three, four, five. I think you'll have to sprint with her because of this wall here. Yeah. I can't sprint through you, can I? No. Oh, okay. Then, yeah, I'll sprint. Going ahead and blast him. All right. We'll pause your time here. You've got yellow and two I, red. I, it's, yeah. It's pretty much a done deal. You just need to deal three damage. It would be a shock if you did two or less. Yeah. Okay. So that's ah, right. uh, bandit gone. So you've sprinted and shot. One, and two, so then, three, four, five, six. You have one more, or no, no, you have, because you have still sprint left. I have five. You have four more sprint there. left, yeah. One, yeah. two, three, Swall. four, five, six. So you can move four more spaces. One, two, lean. You're running to lean this way? Yeah. Uh, okay. You can do that, but remember you can't overwatch because you've used both your actions. Do you still want to stay? I can't here? overwatch? No, because you've sprinted and shot. Oh, right. Then, yeah, never mind. I don't, don't want to lean. Yeah, just want to nestle in that corner. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's your turn. So I have just got smoke, and I will do the only thing I can do. I'll activate him. Oh, this should have gone away. I'll move one, two, three, four, five. And I will uh, yeet one of his smoke grenades right here. Uh, well, he'll, he'll move one, and then he'll lean for two. Like this. I mean, this is the only shot he has. And he'll yeet a smoke grenade right here to just deal one damage to Ash. And then he will overwatch. Oh, okay. All right, so now we're going into round five. 
Uh, this goes away. Um, I think that's everything. We reset our time. You have four minutes. I have one minute. And you get to start. So you have one last round to go defuse that bomb, which is All definitely right. doable. I'll activate Ash. Um, just put him on Overwatch. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Facing that way. Sledge. Or, and, uh, don't, do I have any gadgets left? You've got a drone and a breaching charge. <laughs> yeah, it's going to do me a lot of good. Give me sledge. Uh, da, da, and deactivate, you know. Yep, so one, bomb. one action, so this swaps. Okay, and then you have one action left. So, I mean, at this point, probably just an Overwatch, you know? Yeah. Two. This is an Overwatch. obstacle, so you can shoot through this. This doesn't block line of sight. Oh, technically, these these guys are each uh, located because there's been a camera in here. Oh. It hasn't really mattered, but then all Overwatch, but all. Yeah, this is my last operator, so I just need to yeah. keep this guy from getting in. I'll face it that way. All right. Well, I've got one course of action, and that is to unlean for one, two, three, four, five, and I will sprint to just lean out this way. So, uh, I think, yeah, I think I take a repost on that. Right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You think so? Yep. <laughs> if I survive I mean, the shot, I can spin an action to deactivate this bomb and hope I, mean, I survive the, again. That's a close range. Mm -hmm. that, no, I have to survive two reposts in order to win basically. Because if you, if I, even if I survive the first shot and deactivate this bomb, you'll get to shoot at me again. And if you kill all my operators, you you win. So, all right, so it's heavy cover. So two damage. So he's still standing right now. It's located. All right, here's the moment of truth. I spend an action to rearm the bomb, which means you get another repost. Heavy cover. So you have to deal uh, six damage in order to win. Oof, unfortunately, I have rearmed the bomb and you don't have any actions left, which means at the end of the fifth round, because it is not defused, I barely win the game just from the heavy cover there. Man. There you go, man. That was your first game. I can see why you guys like this one so much.